All right. So, welcome everyone to this fifth live stream of engineeringtrainer.com. Uh, my name is Luc Hanna, I'm the founder of Engineering Trainer, and today I will have a conversation with uh, Sonder Luca Helgesen, who is the CEO and founder of Stressman Engineering, um, and with Eivind Storhau, who is the business development manager of Niras, uh, a world leader in the production of induction bands. Um, we'll, we'll be covering the, the topic of induction banding, what it is, how it uh, compares to welded bands um, uh, and how, you know, how they can be applied. And, and I think, you know, the topics that we will address, address during this conversation will both be interesting from a piping design point of view, but also especially from a pipe stress point of view. Um, before I move to the speakers, let me first of all uh, welcome all of you uh, who are watching this stream uh to this session uh we are uh, you know it's it's a delight having you and i actually want to invite everyone uh who is watching this to um participate in the chat so as a first invitation you know i invite you to let us know what your location is and um, that's always a good icebreaker and, and good fun let us know you know where you're from uh and and uh, from where you are viewing um obviously I want to invite you all to uh, connect with me, with Sondre, with Eivind on LinkedIn, just to connect or to start a conversation and to consider subscribing to the YouTube channel if, if this type of content is relevant for you. Um, having said this, uh, Sondre, Eivind, welcome on board. We are honored to have you, of course. Uh, how are you both doing? Doing great. Uh, very fine, thank you. <laughs> all right, all right. So um, we just, you know, organized the whole setup and uh, uh, um, I'm really happy with it and, and that you could j both join us from, from the location of Strasman, Norway. Um, before we move to the slides, just a quick uh, uh, like brief introduction. Like Eivind, you've been involved with um, induction banding for, for quite a while at Niras. Uh, s since how long have you been working at Niras? I've been working uh, by Niras for um, uh, 10 years, but I've been working with induction bending since uh, 1983. So I've been into the business for almost 38 years. So the time is running away. So, so <laughs> I have long experience with, uh, with, with piping. All right. All right. I mean, that's amazing. And I'm happy that you could join us um, for this conversation. Uh, you know, Sondra and I, we are connecting on a regular basis and, and discussing uh, loads and loads of topics. So uh, it's nice to, now that we're doing this live stream about uh, the induction banding that you were able to join us. I, I actually uh, think that's great. Um, we see all kinds of messages coming in. So people, who, uh, you know, Martin watching from the Netherlands, Tara from Singapore, um, Elmer from the Philippines, we got London, we got England, we got Spain. All right, that's that's amazing. Turkey, thank you, Korkan. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, it's a delight having you all on board for this stream. And I do invite you to share your thoughts, ask questions in the chat. Uh, it will really make this session uh, uh, a lot of fun if you, if you uh, participate actively. Um, having said this, um, we will now switch to the slides um, that will guide our conversation. All right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, perfect. So here we got slide Sondra. Um, yes. Take it away. Thank you. I'm going to do that. So as you already introduced me, I'm the CEO of Stressman Engineering. And at Stressman, we like to say, relax, let us handle your stress. So um, I've been doing this for about 10 years. I'm not as old as Mr. Raven here. So uh, I was only year old when he started working with induction bands. So, <laughs> uh, but we have known each other, me and Raven, we have known each other for quite a long while, actually. Um, and uh, in Stressman, we've done so far about 370 projects. Uh, it's within all fields, uh, all kind of different uh, industries. It's uh, oil and gas, LNG, maritime, land-based, also in the energy sector. And, um, and it's basically numerical analysis. Give us a problem, we'll solve it with the laws of physics and, and computational power. Right. I won't talk too much about exactly what we're doing today. Today, we're going to talk more about induction bending, which is a very interesting topic that um, there is a lot of, call it urban leg uh, myths about it, because it's, um, it's a topic that's kind of easy to understand, but at the same time, it's in, uh, encouraging a lot of questions to it. So 
so uh, for the past, I, I would guess like 15 years, we've been working together because we've been doing the calculations and, and Eivin have been bending the pipes, not himself, but uh, the right, team he right. got up at uh, Bö, which is a small town, like 40 minutes away from here. Yeah. Quite close. Uh, so we are from the same uh, district of Norway called Telemark. And um, it's a lot of industry here. So um, it's actually an interesting place to be. So I don't know if you want to say a few words about Niras, just very briefly. Yeah, Niras was uh, established in 1985, so we have a long time in the business. So, so almost all the people coming from a machine builder called uh, Bombak, uh, who's starting with the induction bending machines in uh, 83. So today we have a five induction bending machine and we are bending up to a 20 inch OD and uh, we could handle a uh, wall thickness out of um, 100 millimeter for a super duplex. So, so we are much into high pressure, high temperature area for, uh, for uh, over application. Yeah, quite big pipes as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but so, as you always say, I mean, it's not about size because most of the pipe, piping that are high pressure, high temperature is not 30 inches, 40 inches, but it's a lot of like six inch piping, eight inch, 10 inch, and so on. So um, I think about 90% of the pipe is from uh, nine uh, or eight inch and, and down. So the, the big mm -hmm. volume is uh, below 20 inch. So, mm -hmm. so um, All right. that is a big number. Yeah, yeah. And as you say, you can bend up to 100 millimeter wall thickness. That's, yeah. that's about four inches. So, so it's, it's, for, the, for the 20 inch machine, so. Mm -hmm. But our uh, last machine was going to OD 135 millimeters, so we see that there is big volume for us and uh, for a high pressure, high temperature uh, piping, and we are much into super duplex, duplex, and uh, all this ground material. So, so um, that that is uh, our specialty. Mm. All right, thanks. And and these are some of the companies who actually use induction bending uh, or induction bends in their in their. Uh, facilities in the process plants in their subsea applications um, a lot of people i meet at least never used induction bends in their designs before so uh, it's just to show that there is a lot of end users who have induction bends in their uh, in their uh, systems so um Right. So we, we are a worldwide supplier, but uh, the, the first induction bending machine was a design and build in 1964 so so of course a lot of induction bend pipes uh, around in the world, but still uh, the big volume man, is uh, way in stand available. So, so yeah. we are looking very much to come into the big project, uh, both topside and subsea and for all. What, what would you say is is um, like before we dive into like the, the technicalities of induction bending, etc. What would you say is the the market share? Is there like an estimate you, you could you could make? The market share between induction bands and, and standard bands? Yeah, like weld, weld yeah. bands, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, but I, I think uh, maybe 0.1% of the oh, really? is uh, bent by induction pipe, and, uh, and the rest is uh, standard welded elbows, uh, almost a 200 year standardized uh, way to make pipelines. So. Yeah, yeah. So we are we have a big big market. If we could get a bigger uh, share of the market, uh, where people are going away from welding in elbow with a 1.5 ton OD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. But for 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 example, subsea applications that we see here in Norway, they're they're quite good at using induction bands. Yeah. And uh, of course, the Norwegian Equinor and uh, all the. Sub supplier is uh, very happy to use super duplex, so so we, we are very uh, happy for every super duplex project coming up. But of course, we have many clad pipes and carbon steel and whatever, but uh, but uh, we are very happy for a craw project for for uh, subsidy pipelines and of course high pressure, high temperature to uh, to avoid welding. So right, all right, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so this talk today is more about understanding uh, induction bending. Uh, what is induction bending? Uh, how do we apply it in design and how do we do the calculations of it? And, and um, uh, that's what we're going to talk about uh, here today. Uh, what is induction bending? It's going to be just a very, very quick crash course into 
induction bending basically it's not going to be all the details this is a uh, uh, speciality in itself how you actually do the work that you're so good at so uh, so as you can see in this picture here uh, there is the heat affected zone that, that's being heated up to around yeah, 11 for, uh, 1150 uh, uh, could it be for super duplex and 900 degrees for carbon steel? So, mm -hmm. so we have a very, very good control of the temperature and the quenching. So we're almost doing the heat treatment uh, for, for the super duplex when we're doing the bending in the bending machine. What, what I really enjoy about this picture is really also, I mean, it's very local heating. At least that's what mm -hmm. it seems from this image. Interesting. And, and what people are saying is with regards to ovality, a lot of people are uh, concerned about ovality that when you bend a pipe, you're going to have, uh, it's not going to be a circle anymore. It's going to be more like an eclipse, for example, mm. uh, or ellipse, uh, I mean, uh, not an eclipse, but an ellipse. <laughs> uh, and and um, but, but that's, uh, this is very local heating. So yeah, very local and to thinner the heating zone is to more cold circle material we have on both sides and that keep the shape around so ah, so yeah. uh, we, we very often uh, or almost for every project for a subsidy we have to do the pigging and it could be a 97 percent of the normal, normal uh, idea so it could be a very 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 tight to the original pipe so uh, i think sometimes the pipe could be more auto than uh, than we could uh, make it to the pipe so so all right yeah yeah so so basically what is happening is that the, the part of the pipe is being heated up and then you have an arm that's not shown so well in this picture though but there's an arm that is is bending the pipe yeah and then you have the cooling or the quenching as you said over here and that was a very very brief introduction to it uh, mm -hmm. As you also mentioned, sometimes if you have very big uh, wall thickness or thick wall thickness, you need to do post heat uh, treatment on it. Yeah, and annealing and tempering for carbon and carbon steel. So we we have the metal works, we have the induction bending machine, and we have the heat treatment uh, furnishers to to give us the right quality. So we we could do the do the heat treatment in the, in the induction bending machine itself up to 25 millimeter for super duplex so so then we could avoid the post and heat treatment after bending so hmm. yeah so but the bigger question is why induction bending if you see for example this fps over here is a it's a huge the, the pro process facilities here are huge so there is so much piping and as, as you said earlier maybe most of this is it's not induction bends. It's it's uh, standard bends that are welded into place. Uh, so so by by um, switching to induction bends, uh, it would um, uh, how do you say it? It would be optimized with regards to cost, delivery time. Um, also, it, it could have an impact on the weight. It helps on the pressure drops. It makes your systems more. Um, uh, energy uh yeah more flexible but also more uh, energy uh, optimized and also it will help on the erosion so so, so sondra yeah uh, like cost i think um uh like it um, would mostly be affected because you simply reduce the number of welds right yes that's uh, that's the main thing uh as we can see in the next picture here this is this is a what we call a flow loop or a spoon ah, in this yeah. case so, so as you can see here, this is the, what they call the nearest loop or the nearest spool, I mean. And it's uh, I, one piece that's bent all in one process. Right. While the original would look, look something like this. If you're only going to have 90 degrees and, and 45 degrees uh, bends, it's going to look like this. And here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, yeah. welds. While this one, you don't have any welds between point A and B on the loop. Yeah, yeah. And then if you compare the two uh, flow loops together or the two spools together, they're, they're almost the same. They're, a lot of people are saying that this 3D uh, bend radius is taking more space than one and a half D bend radius. So yeah, it takes a little bit more space, but not too much space either. And, and as I... Um, 
just a cost comparison uh, between the, the the two different schools here is that, as Ergen was saying, uh, there is a lot of things going into this. So if you buy um, the, the the piping from one vendor with the same uh, batch number or heat number, and and you, let's say you make 10, 10 spools. Uh, for a six inch pipe uh, schedule, uh, extra extra strong, you can save up to 66% in, in cost. If it's a small oh, pipe, wow. if it's a two yeah. inch, then it's 61%. And, and for example, another thing that is very nice is that when you're designing, you can start to use your imagination because the bending machine can can bend in all directions. It's not like if you need to do one by one bend or something like that. You can bend in all directions. So uh, by looking on this this spool here, is that you got if if it was standard bends, you would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, yeah. twelve welds on a regular um, on a regular piping system. Yeah. Now, yeah. This one, I don't know how much time you'd use to bend a pipe like this. I could take about twenty minutes for every bend. So yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> but you you don't have to uh, cut the pipe. You don't have to order the bends. You don't have to have the line of beveling, mm-hmm. welding, welding provocation. You don't. And, and get, ju- just uh, just you for... need to MDE and you 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 save a lot of documentation. So it, yeah. it's a possibility. But another issue that we always can give you a tension uh, and before the bend. Mm-hmm. So you can get the, the welding uh, area away from the heating zone. Yeah, the stage attention here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and just for my understanding, like just to be absolutely clear, this you know obviously is a little bit of a dummy question, but um, so we see the bands here in different colors, but but it's this was like a straight piece of piping, and now mm-hmm. we see these bands because those were heated. That's what what colorizes, what changes the color, right? Exactly. So so it was. In the beginning, it was a long pipe with this color, and then when it's getting bent with a, with a induction heat, you're gonna have a, a darker going color. To, yeah, oxide the uh, oxide the uh, uh, on, uh, on on the pipe. So um, yeah, and uh, inside we use um, a shield uh, gas to to reduce the oxide, so we don't have the same inside. So so we have. Uh, so this is a bend without any uh, wells at all, and you can typically see where the heating zone has been um, attached to the pipe. Yeah, yeah. We we got some a few questions, and I think some of these are nice to just uh, uh, you know uh, ask immediately. Um, so so, is there a minimum bend radius, uh, event? Yeah. So the minimum physical bending radius for machines is sixty-five millimeter. But uh, uh, very often you have a specification who limit the wall thinning in the outer wall of the part to be example 12.5% of normal uh, uh, dimension. So that is normally ah. what we have to follow uh, to to give our customer uh, within the specification. But we yeah. can talk a little bit later about this. Uh, yeah, the people are a little bit scared about the thinning uh, of the pipe, so that is our limit. So, so that, that that's the reason for we we uh, say we want to increase the radius because we ask people to use the same batch and line pipe for both the stride section as yeah. the bend section, so you don't have to waste money to buy more expensive uh, line pipe for for the bend section. Yeah, so yeah. so the, the limit is a little bit more what uh, the customer has for requirements uh, to to the, the wall thinning. Okay, all right. Okay, so that's interesting. Thanks thanks uh, for answering. And I mean, we already got a few questions that yeah, jump straight in, like what about the sieves and, and uh, you know, stress analyses. Um, we'll, we'll get there. Um, I'll, I'll uh, reserve those questions for now. Um, uh, for those who ask them, and uh, I'm, I'm confident that they will be asked, uh, sorry, answered uh, a little bit later on. Um, yeah, Sandra, feel free to continue. <laughs> yeah, so um, also the next uh, picture here, it's just uh, a different re- way of reading it. For example, instead of going, you're going all this from a simple pipe, piping system, it's from A to B. So um, in this case, 
it's one, two, three bends in between here. Uh, we got six welds on it. So one way of doing this could be taking one long uh, uh, line pipe and bend it with two bands. So you get from A to B. Of course, there could be some limitations on this. Maybe you need to have a bit more flexibility due to stress, for example. But, but uh, there is a lot of um, um, uh, ways you can route it when you're not uh, tied up with the conventional uh, bends um, and fittings that is normal. Yeah, yeah and get creative, could be, yeah. Could be very hard to make the spool without um, uh, any weld. So, so then you can cut it in the middle of the stride section and maybe you can ask for get a little bit more overlength in this section so you can get mm -hmm. it. You will then get one weld compared to six. So anyway, you will save time and save money and Mm -hmm. and make a more safer system if you need to to have one well for adjustment hmm. okay and yeah. also you could have been if you wanted this kind of routing you could bend these these bands as well yeah probably more the part the same yeah. the part yeah so so with regards to weight for example um if you are uh you, you can you can optimize your routing basically uh to save weight on your projects uh, you can easier get from A to B in many cases. Pressure drops. This is um, something that the end user is typically very uh, worried about. So if you have a lot of pressure drop in a, in a process plant, for example, yeah, uh, or, or anywhere basically, uh, where, where you, don't, you need some energy to, to pump it along. So. So it is, uh, for example, if you have a 1D uh, bend radius, this is this bend that you see here, going to a 3D bend, you get a reduction of the pre pressure uh, drop through the bend with, with a ratio of 48%. So if you go from 1.5 yeah. to 3 times the radius, we, we still drop maybe not as much as 48, but at least it's 22%. And over 20 years, maybe 30 years, that could be a lot of money in the end. And also that's energy mm -hmm. saved. And, and that's what we need to do in the future is that, yeah, we need to find ways to save energy to, to get a cleaner future. So, um, so, so this is also one yeah. of the uh, things. That's here. a fair point, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then similar to the pressure drop, it's the erosion uh, that can occur. If you have particles, for example, uh, in your flow that might, might erode your pipe on the inside, then uh, increasing the radius will increase, uh, will decrease, sorry, the erosion rates. So, um, so that's another uh, good thing to use induction bends. Hmm. Because if I remember correctly, uh, Sondo, you once stated that that like the the angles that you can um, may basically make are completely uh, free, right? You can do like a seventy-two degree bend if you if you would want. Yeah, to. you can have like. 1.5 degree bend <laughs> or, or, or three degrees bend could you have it would make the design process a lot more creative i, I would love to yeah. uh, do that yeah i think some of the latest ones now had like 88 or 87 degrees angle instead of a 90 degree because they were going to be used as sloped system for example but but back to the the design of the pipeline so is the point a and b very important so maybe if you have the draw that you want to have a 90 degrees and you see to hit the, the endpoints, maybe we have to bend, bend 92 degrees. It doesn't matter so much if the bend the angel is 88 or 92. The, the most important is that the, the end points of the pipe is going to, to be in the right position. Yeah, yeah. But we can be bending in, in within 0 0.5 degrees uh, accuracy, so, uh, so then you, that's no problem with the uh, induction bending. You had no spring back on this problem with the uh, induction mm -hmm. bending. So, right. okay, thanks. Yeah. So this brings us into the uh, the last part of, of this session. Is is uh, okay? This is how we can use it in design. And and if you're going to use induction bends in your design, uh, there's always going to be a lot of questions popping up with regards to how can we calculate those. Today's session is based on B31.3, uh, but first let's take a look at the wall thinning effects. So as you can see here, 
uh, this is actually this, I don't know if you can see it very well, but we got chopped up induction beds in our office, of course. Uh, it's actually been several times to Singapore has been traveling the world, this, this chopped up bend. Uh, I skipped the slide, I didn't mean to skip the slide, I'm sorry about that. There we go. Oops. It became very sensitive. So, uh, as you can see here, um, the inside is getting thicker and the outside is getting thinner. Yeah. The neutral line, as you like to call it, it stays the same. Um, and and, the, and the, the metal doesn't disappear or, or add to it. So, it's, it's going to be the same amount of metal around this cross section here, which is good because then the, the bending, uh, the sectional modulus is going to be about the same. Um, and then uh, I took this picture and I went into Photoshop and I colored it so that it was easier to see the thinning effect that you can see here. And then we had a thickening effect over here. And, yeah. and, um, and uh, we can calculate that very accurately. It's not a problem to anticipate what it's going to be. If you know the wall thickness before bending, we can find out what it's going to be after bending. With a very yeah. high uh, accuracy, and and how to do that, uh, and also this is a white paper that's available on our uh, on our website that we made together with Neres, and and uh, it's uh, free of charge. Just download it. Uh, you don't even need to register at all. It's just I'll uh, I'll make sure to put the link to that white paper in the the notes of this video on on the YouTube. Yeah, channel. that'd be good. So. So basically, what I like about this, we managed to simplify the formulas quite a lot. So it's uh, to find out uh, the, either you can define a wall thin, thin, thinning or thickening in percentage, or, or basically calculate a new thickness if you have the original wall thickness here. So but maybe, all, maybe it's, sorry to interrupt, um, Sondra, like, um, I mean, time is flying, you know, obviously. Yeah. Uh, maybe let's not go into the details of, of the actual mm -hmm. formulas. Um, you know, if people okay. want yeah. to look into them, they, they can download the white paper. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, let's like discuss the numbers and the conclusions. Yeah. So uh, if you just take a look at the white paper and you will have a better understanding of the thinning effect. I think what is more important is the, the, the wall thickness calculation to calculate how much wall thickness do you need to keep the pressure inside, basically. Uh, I, I'm guessing that a lot of people following this um, broadcast are pipe stress engineers that are very familiar with this formula here, which is the wall thickness formula from B to 1.3, which is pressure times um, uh, the outer diameter divided by two times the allowable stress multiplied by two factors here divided by I. If you can see that here, it's a small I here. I'm marked it in, in orange. And then I depends on if you're on the intrados or the extrados. So, so these are the two formulas for it. And this is just an example. It's an extreme example because it's easier to show uh, by numbers. We've tested this out with several sizes as well. But if you have a 1D bend, this is typically the numbers you're going to get with B through 1.3, independent of the size as well. Um, so if you have B through, B through 1.3, you get that factor on the intrados of 1.5, meaning that actually your intrados needs needs to be thicker. It should be thicker. It shouldn't be the same size as the pipe here. If you have the same wall thickness as the pipe, and that pipe size is, is just 99% utilized, for example, it's going to fail inside of here. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to have thicker wall on the inside. And on the extrados, which is outside here, you can have a smaller wall thickness. And, and, and the reason for that, if you look at this, this uh, image here, um, you can see that if you do uh, uh, area calculation like we do for, for nozzles in, in pressure vessel calculations, and we assume that all the pressure inside of this neutral line goes towards the intrados, and then all the pressure on the outside of this neutral line goes to the extrados. You can see that uh, the, the areas compared becomes bigger on this side than, uh, than this side. And basically, this is more explained also in the white paper um, with, uh, with an example, this ex exact example. So when we did 
that simple calculation. Okay, what is the what is the pressure force due to this area we got here with the pressure? Divide that by the area of the extra dust, you get uh, a factor of 0.83. So we got exactly the same as B31.3 by hand calculation. We get 1.48 by hand, while B31.3 get 1.5 is about the same. And then with the FEA that we can see on the screen right now, this number rounds up to 1.48, which is the red area on the intro loss here. And then we got the, um, so yeah, on the intro loss, and then we got the 0.83, which is identical to the extra loss here uh, of B3.3 and our own hand formulas. It gives us uh, a, a value that rounds up to 0.83 as well. So. Yeah, this is confirmed uh, by FEA. It's also confirmed by um, burst testing. And so, then... so basically, if I understand it correctly, Sondra, so, sorry for jumping in. Yeah. So, um, the idea of like you know, you bend the pipe, you have a thicker intradoss and and a thinning on the extradoss. Uh, that isn't that isn't like too surprising. It's even part of the equations that are in the B thirty one point three codes. That that's. Um, what, what yes. I'm taking away here, that, that the, the concept of uh, that being a bad thing is not necessarily so. I mean, it's even mm -hmm. you know in, in, uh, accepted in the codes, exactly. as I now understand. Exactly. So as you say, the wall thinning on the extra loss isn't as bad as, as it sounds like. If you calculate the percentage of reduction of wall thickness and compare it with the allowed thinning effect, you, it, that's that it's not as bad as just taking the percent of wall thickness, comparing it with a straight pipe. Ah, okay. um, yeah, yeah. Probably going to get a few questions about that. So I'm going to save a little bit more uh, of the explanation for later. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Um, and, and also the same thing is that we get an in, increase in wall thickness on the intra -dos, which is also beneficial with regards to how the stresses are, are uh, distributed in a pipe bed. So this is when this is just for the pressure calculation. But then yeah. you want to insert your bends into a, a system, into a into a piping model, and and, and if you're using Caesar two, uh, Triflex, all the pipe, uh, fast suite, it, it's many other softwares out there. They all do the same with regards to the the stress intensification factors, and. And if you use B, in this case, it's based on B31.3. Now B31.3 has the link to that chapter about uh, stress intensification factors, and it refers yeah. to B31J. But for the bends, the formulas are the same. So if you see uh, this orange line going here, that's the in-plane bending uh, stress intensification factor based on uh, the bending radius divided by the um, outer diameter of the pipe. So meaning this is a one and a half D band. This is a standard band. Over here we got yeah. a two D band. You can see that the stress intensification is is getting lower and lower. And that's quite normal because the longer and smoother transition you got, the less stress uh, concentration you'll have in that area. Yeah. But what is interesting here, this was based on a shell study, meaning that you have equal wall thickness all around the the um, uh, the, the FEA model. Um, then we get approximately the same numbers up to three times, uh, th uh, three times the diameter and bending radius, and then it drops down. But what we can see, which is very nice, is that B31.3 is always giving a higher number or the same number as what we get from FEA. Mm -hmm. The same goes for auto plane bending, uh, which we can see this line is from B31.3. This line is from our FEA. So as long as our FEA is lower than what B31.3 is telling us, we're going to be on the safe side. Mm. And then another interesting study was with the FEA of what we call solid elements or 3D elements, where we included the thinning and the thickening effects. We could see that this is still the B31.3 uh, SIF, as well as this one. Uh, so this is the in-plane, and this blue line is the in-plane when we include thinning and thickening effects. So you can see that we are always below B0.3, or we are equal to it. The same goes for the outer plane. This is outer plane B0.3. This yeah. is the outer plane FEA. So as you can see, that it's still below in every case. We went up to 
uh, three and a half times uh, the diameter in bending radius in this study. So what's the conclusion here is that as long as you're using the SIFs from beta one three or beta one j, you're going to be on the safe side. Also with regards to the the, the voltage calculation, you use that those those calculations, you're going to be on the safe side. All right. Yeah. And then this is just an example uh, from a subsea uh, manifold that we did a few years back. As you can see, there is a lot of bends in there. Every single bend in this model are induction bends. And these are uh, six inch pipes schedule XXS or extra extra strong. And uh, the two inch are uh, also, no, the two inch is schedule 160, uh, same as the three inch is schedule 160. So, so quite significant thickness. Yeah, so it's, it's quite significant wall thickness on these ones. So yeah. in this case, also, you can see that this, these bends here are not 90 degrees, for example. These are bent to what suits the, the system the best. Mm -hmm. and, and what we did here, uh, when you're going to code check it, you don't need to do any hand calculations with regards to stress intensification factors. Not, not with regards to the pressure and containment, if you're using beta one three, of course. That, that, yeah. That's an important thing. So if it's different codes and regulation, it might be different ways of looking at it. But um, as from a beta one three perspective, that's no problem. All right, that's interesting. Yeah. So validation of what you're doing is very important. So this is a pipe that was bent and bursted. This is a uh, six inch pipe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, six, six inch, inch pipe, schedule 120. Yeah, a super duplex. No, duplex. Ah, duplex. We, we yeah. select a duplex to make it easier to burst. Yeah. Because right, it's right. About 14 millimeters of wall thickness. Burst pressure was around 1300 bars. So it's a safety hazard as well when you start bursting these pipes. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, before we, not we, but they bent it. Um, all the wall thickness was uh, was measured along the, the mother pipe or the line pipe here. They bent it, which then we could confirm the formulas that we, we are using, as well as um, as we got an accurate, this is our 3D model. It's not so interesting to watch because it looks like a perfect pipe, but it's actually not. So we, we modeled all the different wall thickness that was measured through out here, so yeah. it should be as a perfect representation as possible. Nothing is perfect, but as possible. And and then we have we, we got the um, material models. Uh, no, sorry, material models, but the material properties from someone who was testing the the base material, also the bent material, and we could model that into our calculation and. It bursted over here, as you can see, in our analysis is also indicated that it was going to burst there. This is the, the plastic strain in the pipe. And and we got approximately uh, the same range of, of pressure as well, where it was supposed to burst. And this confirmed our numerical model. Hmm. And what is interesting here is that the, the area here, it was thicker than what it was on the extra dots over here. The extra dust was was thinner than the burst area. Ah, so you mean you mean the the plain pipe section on the right image uh, yeah. was was thicker, yeah. Yeah, so it was thicker, and it confirms also the uh, when we talked about B thirty one point three chapter two about wall thickness calculation. It confirms that as well that that we, we can have a, a, a thinner wall on the extra dust, and we need to have a thicker wall on the intra dust. Right, right. And, and this is just a cross section of, of, uh, of the pipe itself where we have made like an optimized um, uh, um, a model in or a parameterized model in, in SOLIDWORKS where uh, if you need to do a local FEA like you do sometimes for subsea pipe, you need to go in there, do very local FEA due to something called hydrogen induced stress cracking. Mm -hmm. And then we need to see the exact stresses uh, at different locations here. Yeah. 
So I would, uh, ah, all right, perfect. Yeah, I would like to, I was uh, just about to point that out that uh, as I mentioned, you know, time is always flying on these sessions. Yeah. Last time Sondra and I went went on for two hours straight, but but uh, we'll, we'll uh, make sure to avoid that this time. Yeah. Um, we got a ton of interesting questions um, that really tune into this story. And, and I would love to, you know, uh, uh, discuss those uh, with, with both of you. First of all, thanks for asking the questions. Um, we had a question about SIFs. I, I feel that that is covered. If, if not, uh, Tony, feel free to, to provide a follow-up question. Um, uh, an interesting question, um, let me just see. Yeah, so, so a question from uh, Shazada. Um, thanks, uh, Shazada, for asking. In addition to wall thinning, there is a loss of yield strength uh, of material in induction band. Is there some range for this strength reduction? Can you can you maybe comment on this? So so what about material properties and and laws of yield strength? Yeah, so um, uh, when we receive the model pipe uh, from the mills, we have to do a, a test of the pipe and see uh, the 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 chemistry and uh, everything in the in the in the pipe and uh, and we then have to discuss uh, with the metallurgists by the clients. And then we try to achieve better quality in a you know dense section than in the model pipe. So uh, it's very important for us to to get uh, the model pipe from uh, from good mills uh, where we can trust the the values in the mill test certificate. So okay. so almost all quality we could uh, throw it in a way to give you uh, at least the same quality as uh, in, in, in the in the model pipe. What 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 approach is used? Is it like all like um, uh, post heat uh, annealing? Uh, post sorry post pro, pro, uh, process heat an annealing heat, heat treatment? Yeah, for, for, for the first so, so we have very often yeah three different certification coming from our clients. So that is a challenge to try to find out what what they are asking for, and then we have to start analyze what uh, they are asking for. And um, we have to do a qualification test. So when we are doing the bending, we have to do a, a hardness and a corrosion test and sharp PoE and all this um, after bending. And then we have to get this approved from all the client before we start uh, bending. So so we but we we have uh, as a seller over 30 years uh, experience with uh, with uh, from Nidas and we have done over thousand qualification tests so we know a lot of information from different deals different yeah. heat numbers qualities and all this so very often we can pull out uh, almost the same heat number from the same meal uh, from before and see what the results we get and but very often the specification uh, pushes to do a model qualification test uh, self if we have it from 10 times before yeah, so yeah. this experience from I think we are one of the biggest uh, uh, the company in Norway doing most mechanical testing. So we, we have a very good um, data bank for. All right, all right, all right. Uh, thanks, thanks for uh, um, uh, sharing and uh, commenting. And um, I would just like to point out a, a comment that Ian made, which I think is is a fairly good point. Is the band exodus should be expected to be stronger than the straight pipe? He writes. Uh, since the shape approaches a sphere, the hoop stress in a, tr in a true sphere is half of that of a cylinder. Um, so yeah, that's that's a, a, a nice comment to uh, in relation to the uh, the uh, pressure tests that were shown uh, previously. I think. Um, let me just drop another question that I uh, saw passing by, which I think is a, an interesting topic for um, a discussion. Is uh, ovalization, right? So. Um, uh, Shazada, uh, Shazada, yeah, uh, thanks for asking this question, uh, writes, for induction band, ovality at the welding end and uh, within the band uh, can be an issue. Please highlight uh, this in your discussion as well. Like, what is your take on ovalization? Is there a difference in ovalization compared to typical welded um, uh, uh, bands in a, in a piping system? Mm. So... So we, we have always the, this discussion with our clients be, because we we never are doing the bending uh, in the tang and then so so very often uh, the shape of the ends where they're doing the, the welding 
uh, is like the model type. But if we have to do um, a separate um, additional uh, post, then the heat treatment, it could maybe change a little bit in the, in the shape. And then we today are doing um, uh, striping and rolling by uh, different methods, but it could be beveling and machining if it's very, very tight the tolerance. But for some bigger 20 inch pipelines, we all, all very often are doing hydraulic uh, hard forming of the of the ends to to be within the tolerance right so right but if we, we're not doing a digital post and heat treatment we, we are not going to do any process to the end but still we have to try to serve the customer with the the, the end preparation and we're doing the beveling and in the same time we're doing the beveling we are very often doing the machining if you be inside and outside but this is a quite a a very critical operation to uh, to 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 reach the, the tight tolerance, especially if you're doing a clad pipe when you have maybe a three millimeter uh, of clad pipe and uh, a little bit of ovality or the end, then you not have to machine too much. So, so that that's always a challenge, but it's, it's a very good question, and we uh, we have to have focus on it from from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, thanks thanks for um, detailing that. Um, another question from, from Ian, uh, which uh, maybe somewhere you can um, share your thoughts about is, do you make any distinction or did you make any distinction in the analysis that you did between seam welded and seamless uh, um, base pipe? So for, um, and I, I now understand this question a little bit better. So for mm -hmm. if you do like um, induction bending, do you make a distinction between seam welded and seamless uh, base pipe? What, what, what uh, is your comment? I'm just thinking here, uh, seam welded, do you have anything to add on the fabrication method there? If there is any, do, do you see any uh, no. so, so while you make it? So when we uh, received uh, the, the RFQ and we make a quotation, we make always an induction bending procedure. And there very often that uh, if it's seamless or what kind of pipe it is. So, so then we have to, to discuss if it could be sigma in the well area, if we have to put a weld in a neutral zone, so we are not are going to put it in the worst area for bending. And if it's not possible to make spools, we have to make bends. And then we have to put the, the weld in the neutral zone when we're doing the bending. So this is something we have to discuss with uh, yeah. our clients and uh, very often they have a very good metalworks uh, inside their uh, own organization so then over metalworks are discussing with their own metalworks uh, for if we get scrap pipe uh, from from the mill we cannot make right. gold <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. we, we have to, <laughs> to to know what we get from uh, the model pipe and what the customer uh, asks us to, uh, to achieve so yeah. sometimes it's not possible to uh, achieve the mechanical property both for uh, for tensile and sharp in the same time if you not get the right uh, model pipe. Yeah, but that, so so can you can you uh, induction bend uh, welded uh, longitudinally welded pipes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a lot of it. Yeah. So mm. back to the question because the question was related to. Um, to the stress calculation, what if you have a welded pipe? Uh, I haven't really made much distinction between those because when we have been using it the few times for uh, for a high pressure systems where we have welded pipe, uh, it's usually the quality factor of the weld is equal to one. So uh, it doesn't really matter for, for our analysis. It could matter for if you have a sub C analysis, I just mentioned briefly, uh, how yeah. do you stress cracking? Then we need to know where the wells are, and that could make an impact. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And if we get the sigma from a mill, uh, we have we have to try to find a solution to re reduce the effect of the sigma when we're doing the bending. And yeah. that uh, is very nice because we could play with the temperature uh, in, in the bending process or in the post-bend treatment. All right. Um, I would like to address a final question. I mean, uh, we're, we're um, going having a little bit of additional time here, like a few minutes, which I think should be shouldn't be too much of an issue. So I would like to address this final question. Um, 
So, Sondra, you mentioned uh, the, the, the thickness exodus intradus um, from the B31.3 uh, equation. Um, what would you say, is, is there like a difference? Uh, will the wall thickness in an induction banded band will be thinner than in a welded band? So I think, I would, mm -hmm. like, I think the ex extra dose would be the most relevant one. Um, yeah, that's that's, yeah, what, that's what's a very relevant on? question. A very yeah. interesting question. We actually did a, uh, it's interesting to be asking, it's because uh, a lot of times when I go to pipe band suppliers, not the people who makes them, but the people who sells them, I ask them, okay, what's the wall thickness on the extra dust? And it's like, oh, it's, it's the same as in the pipe. I asked them, what is the intro dust? It's the same as the pipe. And I'm like, but if it's the same as the pipe on the intro dust, you're going to have a problem. If it's the same on the extra dust, it's going to be fine. But on the intro dust, you need to have a thicker wall thickness. Right. So we, uh, it was last year. Yeah, it was uh, in 2020, just in the beginning of the pandemic, we were supposed to send to, to students to, to Italy. But of course, we know how all that went. So uh, we couldn't go. Uh, but what we managed to do before the pandemic hit was that uh, they got the opportunity to travel to one of the, the pipe band suppliers here in Norway that sells a lot of uh, duplex, super duplex um, components. And they spent a week over there measuring, physically measuring the components. And they could see that the trend was that they always have a thicker intra dust than the extra dust. It yeah, seems yeah. like sometimes the, the welded components are made from a bit uh, thicker uh, raw material before they're being bent. Um, so, uh, so, so they're going to be in nature a little bit more stiff uh, than uh, than an induction bend as well. So, um, so, um, so, so that's. But, but if you buy a Asma B sixteen point nine. Uh, kind of bend, you know that it's going to be as strong as the pipe with regards to pressure. So you don't need to use the right. uh, ASMA B31.3 calculation method. You can just trust the people supplying it. They should have some kind of documentation of it, which I, by the way, never seen. So if somebody has documentation of that, that would be very interesting to see. But they're doing verse, tests, uh, verse testing these these components to, to verify the strength. So, so in such case, if you buy a standard component like a band or a T or whatever that are in accordance with B16.9, then there is no no need to do the hand calculation of the, of the wall thickness. And, and have you ever been uh, in the uh, opportunity to compare the thinning and thicking of welded bands uh, with respect to um, uh, induction bands? Uh, if you see all the way um, you know, we are doing the wall thinning and the thickness calculation, uh, if you take it from a pipe, it's the same if you do the induction bending or core bending or bending by hand. It's, it has nothing ah. with metal to do. Because if you're doing the core bending, you have the same that the, in the extra dose, you have the longer way and the shorter yeah. way. In the dose. So it's an area calculation. Uh, uh, more for, because no material is disappearing and no is adding. But if you see how you make a forced bend or uh, all the polar bend, bend, so so it's a little bit different from, from the process you are you are making it. But it's still a hot work uh, uh, process uh, for making a standard bend. And yeah. as uh, some say, it could be a different supplier. We have different thickness, uh, oversized thickness before they start uh, forging the uh, or forming the, the band if you if you go into yeah. uh, see from some abroad company making a big number of uh, standard bands it's uh, mm. yeah it's, it's uh, hot formed and uh, mm. we have the same mm -hmm. so this with wall, yeah. thi wall thickness is it, the same for uh, it's in just a physical way to, to do the calculation don't think about the induction bending or cold bending or whatever. All right. Yeah, oh, that's mm -hmm. an interesting comment. Yeah, I, I think that's a good comment to um, uh, for us to to wrap this conversation uh, up as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I've been working for a uh, pipe stress engineer for for a couple of years, and uh, um, I've uh, you know touched many of these topics. But but I definitely learned a lot about induction bending and and. Uh, how that affects uh, analysis and, and the concepts that come into play during this session. So, uh, Sondra and Övind, thank you uh, a lot for, for joining us today.
and taking the time to, to explain these matters. Um, I want to thank the audience as well for uh, asking the questions and, and being involved. That was really uh, nice. And uh, I invite all of you uh, to connect with uh, Sondra, Eivind and myself on LinkedIn just to stay connected and to uh, ask any follow-up questions that you have. Uh, and if you think this, this type of content is relevant for you and your, your colleagues, uh, I invite you to subscribe to the YouTube channel and maybe share the content to, uh, to any, uh, any people within your network uh, that might find this interesting, to, you know, which will help us spread the word, of course. Um, on that note, uh, Sondra, Eivind, uh, it was a pleasure and uh, have a great day. Yeah, you too. You take care. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye-bye.